Hey everyone, so before we jump into today's q and I just wanted to mention a couple things. First of all, I just wanted to remind you about last week's video, which was the Scribble Challenge. So if you missed that one, make sure you go check it out. The next thing I wanted to talk about is how the art came about. So the story was I got asked to fill in over on the Adobe Twitch channel kind of last minute. And so I had to come up with an art idea really, really quickly. And this one just kind of came to mind. I wanted to draw a woman with her head tilting back. And then I thought she could be looking at something. And then I got the idea to draw hands reaching out to her. And that's when it all kind of came together. And that's how the message behind it came about, which is that she is in need of help. She's in a dark place emotionally and she needs help, but she's not sure if she wants to accept the help. And that's what the hands kind of represent is people reaching out to help her, but she's just looking up like, do I want to accept this help? Like I know I need it, but she's kind of nervous, kind of scared to accept the help. And so that is what the art is about. All right, so let's get on to the Q&A. And as usual, I ask questions over on my Twitter account, which is at Bailey underscore J. So if you want to be involved in future Q&As, be sure to follow me over there. I'm also planning on doing a giveaway on Twitter once I hit 20,000 Twitter followers. So if you want to be involved with that, also make sure you are following. All right, so let's get right into this. The first question comes from Mermaid Daughter, who asks, what brand sketchbooks do you recommend? I don't have a specific brand that I recommend because I think any sketchbook works. It's really just a place to get ideas down, to get your doodles down, and so it doesn't need to be anything fancy. If you are planning on doing a ton of color illustrations in a book, you might want to get a paper that can handle the medium that you're using. But if you're really just using it for sketching mostly, anything works. Just go to your local art store and see what they have on sale or what they have that you like because it's not really that important when it comes to sketchbooks. Madame Bury asks, how do you keep from getting your head on camera when drawing? I feel like I always draw with my nose to the paper. I'm not entirely sure because there are times when I still get my head in the way, but I find that I only put my head close to the paper when I'm doing something that's either one, really detailed, or two, something like inking where you're trying to do these little lines and it's permanent and you really don't want to screw up. It's like really intense for me. so. That's kind of when I tend to get closer to the paper, but I guess it just has to do with the way my camera is set up, I guess. I'm not really sure. And when I'm zoomed in a little bit, it helps my head not get in the way. Tegan asks, what is your least favorite Copic color? It's probably FYR1, which is a fluorescent orange. It's kind of like an orange highlighter. <laughs> and it's because one, I don't really like oranges. They're my least favorite colors. And two, I don't really use highlighter type colors in my artwork. And so I have that marker, but I'm probably going to use it like once or twice in my lifetime, I feel like, because it's just too vibrant and too orange. Well, I might use it as a highlighter, actually. So it, it, it might get some use. Mark Curley asks, whose jokes are funnier, mine or Jazz's? You call those jokes? <laughs> Alex's Spoopy asks, what do you recommend beginning artists use as a paint program? I know GIMP was kind of the go-to free software for a while, but there's one out called Krita. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, but it seems like it's really good. I've never tried it, but I'm seeing a lot of people using it and recommending it, and it's 100% free, which is why it's good for beginners, because it's kind of tough to invest in some software if you don't know if you're going to really like it, and so that is probably a good place for beginners to start. Emma in Mexico land asks, what's the worst thing about being self-employed in your opinion? I feel like there's no one thing that I can think is the worst, but I can give you a few things that are downsides to it. And I do want to make a whole video about self-employment, like my journey and how I deal with it and what my schedule is like, all that kind of stuff. I want to make that sometime down the road, but I would say the things I don't like are taxes and bookkeeping, like, you know, keeping track of all your receipts and your expenses and calculating out what counts as a business expense, what counts as just regular home use and having to set aside money for tax season because it doesn't automatically get taken off your paycheck. You got to take that off yourself and set it aside for taxes. So all tax stuff is really annoying. Also, um, learning to self-discipline is 
very tough because it's up to you to set your own schedule and stick to it and not get distracted. And so definitely developing that self-discipline was very tough. The final thing is that I work from home and so sometimes I get a little stir crazy and I just want to leave the house. And so the cabin fever is another downside. Jose Alvarez asks, what would you consider the biggest misconception people have about being a YouTube or a Twitch partner? I would say the biggest misconception is the amount of time and effort it takes to create videos. And so there are certain videos that are easier and some that are more difficult, but just because something looks easy on the surface doesn't necessarily mean it was easy or that they didn't put in a ton of time to make it. So I'd say that's the biggest misconception out there. Pay Skeleton asks, least favorite thing to draw? Definitely geometric shapes, like inorganic geometric shapes, buildings, sidewalks, desks and furniture, oh, all that kind of stuff, like hard, straight surfaces. Oh, it's just annoying. I'd rather draw organic shapes like people and animals and that kind of thing. To me, that's much more fun. Christian Escoto asks, when did you decide to become an artist and did it worry you financially becoming one? It kind of just developed gradually. There wasn't a point where I decided that's what I'm doing. Even though as a kid, I was like, I want to be an artist. Although I did switch over to artsy stuff. Uh, after my third year of college. And so I guess that's kind of when I made an official switch to artsy like careers, but still animation is different than what I'm doing now. So it's kind of still different. <laughs> and did it worry me financially? It actually didn't because I made sure I was at a secure enough point before I quit my job. I wasn't just like, I'm gonna quit my job and live off of three months of savings and try to make it as an artist. No, I like made sure I was making enough money off my art so that even on a bad month, I could still afford to pay all my bills plus some. And so, yeah, that's how I went about it. And even now there's still uncertainties because you never know if a year from now you're going to be making the same amount of money or doing the same things, having the same revenue sources. And so there's definitely that level of insecurity about the job, but um, I'm not concerned about it. I'm just kind of going with the flow and making sure I adapt as things around me change. And if you just spend your whole life worrying, you're not really living. So I just try to take it one step at a time. Sadie asks, do you ever get nervous about posting your art? Afraid it won't be liked or will get stolen. Definitely as my following has grown, I've become more insecure about posting it because I feel like I need to impress people. And if I upload something that's not as good as my last thing, then people will criticize me for it. And so I definitely get nervous and I have my insecurities, but to me, it's still so worth it. And um, if I didn't start posting my art online, I wouldn't be making a living doing art at all. And so it's kind of like... You kind of, there's some give and take there. There's always those risks, like risks your art will be stolen. You kind of just, that's the downside of the job. It sucks, but you can't prevent it 100%. But I mean, if you really want to get your name out there as an artist, you can't let those fears stop you. Elegance and Crafting asks, if Christian didn't support you vlogging, would you still do it? If so, why? I feel like we would need to try to compromise because he can't just say, oh, I don't like you vlogging because then I could just say, oh, I don't like you playing video games. Like it's kind of dumb. There needs to be some kind of compromise. If it was something like privacy that was a concern, we would just decide like what kinds of things would I show or talk about and what kind of things are off limits, that sort of thing. Because I feel like it's he doesn't have a right to tell me to not do it altogether. But as a couple, we need to come to a compromise and do something that works for both of us. Nari asks, why did you change your style from anime style to realistic slash cartoony? It wasn't a conscious choice. That's just kind of how my art developed over time as my tastes changed. Like back then, I also watched a lot of anime. And so that was reflected in my art. But now I don't really watch much of any anime. I mean, I don't watch that many shows at all, but um, <laughs> because I'm not watching anime anymore, it's not influencing my art anymore. So I guess that's probably the reason. 
ScribbleFix asks, am I allowed to color in the line art you have available in a video? I would give credit to you as the creator, of course. Yes, if you want to download one of the line arts I have available on my website, they're free by the way, uh, you can use them in videos, you can post your colored in picture on Instagram, wherever you want. All I ask is that you just give credit back. So post away. All right, so that is it for this Q&A. Thank you everyone who submitted questions. I hope you guys enjoy my watercolor painting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.